Good evening. Welcome to Evening Prayer, Tuesday the 7th of April. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender, the Senior Pastor at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church here in Northampton. Glad that you could join me for prayer this evening. And I just want to say again, it's heartfelt every time I say it. Thank you so much for joining Thank you so much for allowing me the privilege of being able to lead this online community that's gathered and formed. And it's so good uh, that we're able to be together uh, each day to pray. A reminder that tomorrow at 9am and 9pm there'll be prayer. There's a devotional that's going out each week at uh, 12 noon. And if you've missed any of those, then they are available on the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church YouTube channel as well as gobbling here uh, and on the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church Facebook page. Uh, to give you uh, notice ahead that on Monday Thursday at 7 there'll be a special service which will include uh, a family celebration here of communion uh, which may be a blessing to you. On Good Friday in addition to the regular services at 3 p.m there will be an afternoon event at 3 p.m. at the foot of the cross, which will be a series of prayers and readings, which you're most welcome to join in with. But for now, as we gather to pray, I invite you to bow your heads with me as we worship God together. And we meet together this evening to pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 143 Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my supplications in your faithfulness. Answer me in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued me, crushing my life to the ground, making me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me, my heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old, I think about all your deeds, I meditate on the works of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your steadfast love in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Teach me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Save me, O Lord, from my enemies. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on a level path. For your namesake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of trouble. In your steadfast love, cut off my enemies and destroy all my adversaries, for I am your servant. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in this sacred and solemn week, when we see again the depth and mystery of your redeeming love, help us to follow where you go, to stop where you stumble, to listen when you cry, to hurt as you suffer, to bow our heads in sorrow when you die, so that when you are raised to life again, we may share your endless joy. God of mercy and truth, we seek your forgiveness for the sinful ways we live. We are unworthy to be your children, unfit to be your servants. We are burdened with memories of things undone that ought to have been done, 
and of things done that ought not to have been done. Bring us afresh the healing and cleansing power of your Spirit, that we may lay hold of the salvation you offer and walk in newness of life. To the glory and praise of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading this evening is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning to read at the 13th verse. Sorry, the 18th verse. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. One of my favourite miracle accounts of Jesus in the New Testament is when he heals the man who was born blind. And I love the back and forth of the discussion that goes on there. Uh, and ultimately, at one point where the man who was born blind was brought in front of the rulers, uh, the Pharisee said to him, well, tell us how this all happened. He said... Well, I can't really tell you anything other than this. Once I was blind and now I see. And I love the humour that's in that whole passage. And that's what happens, you see, when Christ comes into a person's life. Their eyes are opened. Their minds are opened. Their hearts are opened. By Christ, who is the wisdom of God and the power of God. And God has called constantly down through the ages people who the world despises or who, th who the world thinks are insignificant. And why has he done all this? He's done it because he has a plan. You see, verse 26 has an interesting phrase. Consider your own call. I love the fact that each one of us has our 
own call. We're not just called as part of a group of people. Yes, we're called to be one people, but we are still called one by one. And God in his grace is calling to you today to remember your call, to remember that it doesn't matter how wise you are by human standards. It doesn't matter how powerful you are because Christ identifies with you when you feel weak. Christ identifies with you when you feel insignificant, when you feel foolish, when you feel low or despised, when you feel like you are insignificant in the world's eyes. You have significance and worth and power because of the one who calls you. Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. May you know again how special you are to him because he gave himself for you. He became wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's confess our faith together as we share together in those words which Christians have said down through the ages. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray together for ourselves and for the world and for those whom we love. Father, we need your help in fighting our sins. We need your help to stop us saying or doing hurtful things. Please bless us with the constant presence of your Holy Spirit so that we may live clean and honest lives. Show us how to make amends for any hurt we have caused. Grant us the courage to say sorry. Give us the grace to forgive others that we may be forgiven and be able to forgive ourselves. Your love comforts us, Father. You are our strength and our song, our peace, our freedom and our joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and hope, in Jesus you meet us in our places of pain and fear. Look with mercy on those who have contracted the new virus, COVID-19, on any who are vulnerable and on all who feel in danger. Especially this evening, we continue to pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Through this time of global concern, by your Holy Spirit, bring out the best, not the worst in us. Make us aware of our interdependence upon each other and of the strength that comes from being one body in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, thank you for bringing this day to a close. Thank you for giving us rest in body and soul. Your hand has been over us and has guarded and preserved us. Forgive us our lack of faith and any wrong we have done today and help us to forgive all who have wronged us. Let us sleep in peace under your protection and keep us from all the temptations of darkness. Into your hands we commend our loved ones and all who dwell around us. To you we entrust ourselves, body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's share together in saying the Lord's Prayer in whatever form or language is common to us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Saviour be glory and majesty, dominion and power, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, with those whom you love, and with God's people everywhere this night and for evermore. Amen. God bless you tonight with the gifts of peace, sleep and rest. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing with me in this prayer. Look forward to meeting with you tomorrow, 9am and 9pm. And our daily devotional will be broadcast around 12 noon tomorrow as well. In the meantime, God bless you. Please stay safe and please keep fit and well and keep praying for one another. God bless you. Good night.